Firstly, chloroform is placed in a round bottom flask. I used approximately 2 liters of chloroform. Now, the solvent needs to be purged with nitrogen to get rid of oxygen gas. Then, sufficient amount of dipyromethane is added. I use approximately 2 grams of the pyromethane and we need to wait until it dissolves. Then, paratol aldehyde is added. and a catalyst, trifluoroacetic acid, is also added to the reaction mixture. It's very toxic and dangerous. After 2 hours, an excess of an oxidizing agent, DDQ, is added to the reaction mixture. Later I'm gonna explain why is it necessary to add it. DDQ is also very toxic. With water it releases hydrogen cyanide. Observe color change. Then, after 30 minutes, the acid is neutralized with triethyl amine. generates fumes.
The reaction is purified using silica gel black with dichloromethane as an eluent. As you can see, greenish mixture contains reddish porphyrin. Yeah, you can see it now. And the solvent is evaporated using rotary evaporator. Okay, let's talk about the mechanism of the occurring reaction. Firstly, an aldehyde molecule is being protonated. It's H plus ion, so it's protonated. And we get something like that. There's positive charge, of course. We can draw a corresponding resonance structure. As we can see, there's positive charge at carbon atom. So, the pyromethane binds to the protonated aldehyde molecule. NH, NH, and here's, sorry, I definitely have to practice my drawing skills. Okay, and it binds here. Resulting compound is here. Okay, as you can see now, there's a positive charge and here's paratolic ring. Okay, as you can see now, uh, this molecule loses, the spiralic ring, loses its aromaticity when addition occurs. Oh no! So let's bring the aromaticity back by loss of a proton. This proton is lost. And we get something like that. And H and here's OH and paratolic ring. There's OH group, so, so this group can also be Protonated, and the second molecule of the pyromethane can be bound here. Yes, can bind here. So let's draw it on another page to better understand the mechanism. Here's the first molecule of dipyromethane. Here's aldehyde. Second molecule of dipyromethane. And here's second molecule of aldehyde. Okay, so after addition occurs, they are bound together to form ring. So let's draw this ring. Resulting compound is so called porphyrinogen or porphyrin porphyrinogen. I don't know how to pronounce it correctly in English. Something like that. Oh, not here, here, here. 
several ones. And here are paratolic groups. Paratolic groups. And here's micro. That's a microcyclic compound. Okay, but the resulting molecule is called this porphyrinogen. Yeah, and addition of DDQ to the reaction mixture is necessary to oxidize it to our lovely porphyrin. And the porphyrin's formula is not formula but structure. Let's try to draw it. Four pyrrolic rings bound to themselves. There's methane bridge, yeah. Bound together. Oh. Okay. And there are double bonds. Okay. And here are NH protons and parasolic groups. Now let's take a brief look at the synthesized diaryl porphyrins H enema spectrum. Okay, so here's the signal from so-called mesoprotons. These two protons at meso positions. They are equal in the magnetic field because of symmetry. There and there. Okay. These signals correspond to beta periodic protons. There are four equal protons and they give signal here and there are other four equal beta protons and their signal is here. There's also signals from these paratolic protons in aromatic ring. These four protons give their signal here and these four protons here. The inner NH protons due to aromatic ring current are strongly upfield. They have even negative chemical shift and are broad. Thank you for watching as I strongly encourage you to comment and share. Thank you.